What was it like to have a Saturday without a game? Awesome. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, we enjoyed it. Um, we got back Saturday from doing some recruiting and uh, had a chance to watch a few games. So last time we saw you, you guys were all beat up. Yeah. Did that improve? Or what, what, what's your situation? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Anything as far that, as I'm going. Anything that might be long term out of all those? No. Or? Okay. no. Yeah, we're good. So we'll see. I mean, every time we're good, then someone will have to practice. But, you know, we're on track. And, you know, as long as we don't lose anybody in practice, we're, you know, we're making progress. So. Uh, you said before the bye, you kind of see where Joe was at after the bye. You think you get him back the next couple of weeks? Yep, or? I do. So we'll just see. Yeah. I heard he's been sort of nudging trainers and, and wanting to get out there. Is he, is yeah, he, that he, close? He, he somehow got his, his uh, MD here in the last two <laughs> weeks. Uh, so he's, you know, he's a competitor. He wants to be out there. But he's making great progress. So we'll see. Is he the starter if he's ready to play? Or how do you look at his? Yeah, well, he's not ready to play. So we'll figure that out when the time comes. How, how do you make the decision? I mean, is it... Is, is it on him to? No, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I mean, I'm not going to sit here three weeks out or whatever we are and say this is what's going to happen. A lot happens, we know, in this game in one day, let alone, you know, weeks. So, we're, we're, you know, Grant's our guy. We're going with him. We'll see when Joe gets back, and we'll go from there. I, I mean, the decision of whether he can play or not. That's, that's the doctors. And then, you know, we'll see where he's at. I mean, the doctors will probably say, um, you know, It'll be interesting to see when he's full speed, if he, you know, if he is at all. And then we just don't want to, you know, put him in harm's way at all. I mean, because it's one thing to stand in the pocket; it's another thing you have to run for your life to get out of there, which which will happen. So, you know, all those things will be taken into consideration a lot, like we did with Ryan when he came back. You know, and I remember when Ryan came back. I mean, um, you know, he wasn't 100 percent, and so you got to, you know, that's why it's a gray area, and that's why it's hard to sit here and say anything. Because you know, Joe's gonna. Oh yeah. That he's fine. oh yeah. He would have. He'd be the starter last week if it was up to him. <laughs> when Ryan, when Ryan went down with his ankle, he lost a lot of weight during that time that he was out and had trouble gaining it back. Has there been a way to keep Joe's weight up and his the yeah, rest I of think, his strength up? Yeah. Um, he. I think he weighs the same. So he might weigh more if he's <laughs> eating more. So I don't know. I don't think that's going to be an issue. <laughs> What do you think the bye week did for, for Grant? Now it's sort of a chance to sit back and digest what's happened here the last few weeks. Well, I think, uh, you know, not only the bye week, but just playing, you know, more, more so playing than the bye week. Yeah. Uh, it's been good for him. And, we're, I mean, Grant, Grant, we've said it for a long time that we really think Grant's going to be a heck of a player. And I think that, you know, he's starting to, he's starting to show that. I mean, he's um, – and it's so hard in practice to get those – or even a scrimmage um, – because you make an error, you know, you're the backup, you don't get as many reps, you kind of move on and you're a little bit discouraged on, on the air. You know, the backup almost has to play so clean to be able to make a make a run at that starting position so so often. But, you know, all of our guys that have been backups that have then got their chance have really done a good job and Grant is no different. And um, it's exciting to see, but he's got some really great tools and we've known that since the day we recruited him. I mean, he can run, he's got a strong arm, his mechanics are really, really clean. I mean, all those things. And I probably should stop talking because I guess it comes down to coaching. If it doesn't go well. So, uh, but, you know, it's an exciting time for Grant and, um, you know, for everybody. It really is. Are you, are you surprised at anything that, that he's done out there? Has anything been uh, like, wow, I wasn't no, sure. No, it's more of like this is what we kind of knew he could do. Um, you know, we're excited for, for Nick as well, Nick Patty, to get more reps and to, you know, I think it just helps everybody. You know, you don't. You don't want Joe to be out. You don't want your star to be out. But when it does, you know, you look at the flip side. Okay, what are we getting out of this? And these two kids are getting some great experience. Where do you think Grant is better from before he walked on the field as basically the starter until now? Where do you it's probably you'd have to ask him that, but it's probably just confidence. You know, knowing that he can do it in a game, and those pra practice reps do translate into to uh, those good clean practice reps translate into good clean game reps, and that. Uh, you know, when you're practicing at a high level, it'll carry over into the game. It doesn't mean you make all the plays or you're totally perfect, but it means you can play at a high level, which we thought that about him. Before you wound down toward the end of that game, you were scoring almost a point of play against Colorado State. I mean, you had like 43 plays and 42 points. Is that the most efficient your offense has been in a while? Well, I, I think we, we once we got off, off our slow start, 
you know, it's, yeah. it's all that great practice time of starting fast. Uh, it was good, um, and you know, we want to we want to score quickly and put points on the board. You know, in some ways, and they, you know, Colorado State was doing a good job on offense. It was working against us a little bit in terms of 106 plays that our defense had to see. So you, know, you kind of look back and you're thinking, man, I wish you weren't quite that efficient. Maybe it took a few more Is there plays. a reason you were so efficient? I, I, well, I think I think a lot of it always starts at the quarterback. You know, maybe it doesn't start there, but it ends there. Um, we always say that. You know, when our quarterback's playing well, our offense is gonna is is gonna eventually do well. How do you look at that? Because obviously you want the offense to score every play, but the defense does get put in a tough spot sometimes when they're out there for 109 plays. Yeah. Or whatever it was. Well, and a little bit comes back to our. I mean, we know we were shorthanded on defense, and so a little bit comes back to our defense. To we got to get some more stops. You know, we got to stop them on third down and get a few more turn. We had chances on turnovers, and we just couldn't get our hands on it as much as we needed to. I mean, I think we had three or four other chances, and you get a couple of those, I think it changes the game. And so, I mean, they, they, everybody's we're all working together, but everybody's got to do their their share of the, the bargain. At the, at the end, did you have any other options uh, besides Kyrie to put in there at tackle? Did, were you talking about what, what are we going to do? No, we didn't want to cross that guy. bridge. Uh, you know, there's always those guys always have other options, our defensive coaches. and uh, But, uh, you know, we really weren't counting on that happening. But just it's kind of how the game goes. Yeah, Matt heard to said he almost volunteered. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Uh, he needs to stay put. <laughs> Any of the newbies on defense and pressure and playing out of position? Well, again, I, th I think Tanner Vallejo, he's not playing out of position, but for a freshman to play whatever, 90-some snaps and play at a pretty high level in a physical game, uh, you know, also with not that maybe starting D-line front in front of him that can really help a linebacker out, you know, I think he's done good. I think all those guys have. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate when Ben went out, you know, two freshmen, and, um, but then I think Tyler Gray's done a good job, and Darren Lee's gaining experience, and Corey Bell's a staple. We play him all over, and so we, you know, we're just moving guys around to, to make plays. But he's one of the guys. I think those two freshman defensive ends are doing a nice job and gaining really good experience. And Gabe Perez and Kamale Carrera. I mean, those guys are those guys are you know good solid players, and their their best days are ahead of them for sure. Corey so said, when you mix and match like that and play, you know maybe. The second linebacker position, you understand better how to play your position because you know what they're doing over there. Is that? Yeah. No. Well, I think for a guy like Corey, that's true. Um, you know, he can see the big picture and how they all fit together. I mean, I think depending on your experience level and how many, you know, how many reps you've had, I think that takes kind of a rare guy to be able to figure all those things out. It does help you, but you know, some of these young guys, I mean, they're just trying to figure out their position. If you move into another one, I mean, you've got no chance. Robert Ash is a guy who's kind of bounced around position-wise, and all of a sudden you look down there and he was playing really meaningful snaps for you. Yeah. What have you seen out of him in well, the last couple of weeks? Well, I think he's making some progress, and uh, we need him to make you know more progress. And um, but it's good. I mean, it's, he's another one of those guys that's not exactly I mean, he's on the he's on the young side, but he's been around here for a while, and so you know all these guys you know sit in the sit in the wings waiting, and then. All of a sudden, it's your time, and you got to produce, and you got to make plays. And I think he's, you know, he's gaining valuable experience. Just, you know, I know something we've talked about before, but seeing the, the trend in college football with these offenses going to the hurry up style, you know, I guess just how would you assess it this far into the season, seeing it week after week after week? Um, what do you think of the trend of, of that? Well, I think it makes it hard on defenses. Uh, you know, sometimes your own. Um, but I think if you probably look, I mean, and you guys know better than I that, you know, scoring is probably up. I mean, certain teams are certainly scoring a lot of points. And, um, you know, in, in some ways we think it's helped us. I, I think it's never any one thing, you know. It's, it's not going to be just not huddling up. It's, you know, you've got to execute whatever style you're into. And so it's you know, a combination of things and trying to figure out how many points you can score. I think it leads to more injuries. I mean, there are I, more plays. I, you know, again, I... It's just, I think there needs to be a study done, but that's, that's not, um, you know, the guys that we got dinged up were, were much earlier than that. You know, we, it wasn't late in the game and, you know, 90 whatever plays over there. And you're going to have that, I mean, just by the nature of, um, you know, statistics and probabilities and all those things. I mean, you're out there, you're taking more reps, but 
that's not where I've really noticed them, you know, late in the game. I mean, it seems like if we can get through the first quarter, we're making progress. <laughs> How much of an emphasis? I mean, I know we always talk about depth here, but I mean, just how much more of an emphasis does it does it put on that? You talk about, you know, could you have ever imagine Tanner at the beginning of the season playing ninety snaps in, in a game as far as end of the year? Yeah, um, you know, I think you probably talk to every coach um, around the country at this time of the year, and everybody's going to have a similar story. I really, I really believe that. Um, you trying to get me back on the bandwagon for five years of eligibility? <laughs> I mean, it just is. I mean, there might be, you know, a handful of guys that go, man, we've just really, really stayed healthy and haven't had a lot. But I think those guys are rare. And so, because we, you know, we get down to the same thing every year. Maybe, maybe not so thin, but it's this thin at certain positions. It just seems to have gone, you know, a little bit more broad than, than it has in the past. But, you know, you look at uh, – you know, you look at Florida, I know with, you know, Brent Pease. I mean, it's just a lot of people have the same issues. Well, your, your defensive line, and I know you're doing it a lot of spots, but your defensive line rotates, you know, two lines through every time. And certainly when you're trying to face 109 plays or when you do have injuries, it seems like that maybe really, you know, is a beneficial thing that you guys have been doing for years. Now. Well, I think you have to do it. You know, I, I don't know how, uh, you know, how a D-line could play you know, high 80s or snaps and play every snap. I just think that position is – I think defense in general is different um, than offense in terms of energy expended. And I think that position is, is one of the hardest. And, and that's something you guys have, have done since back in 06. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just I mean, some, when, when there's less plays and they're taking less plays right. and you just know that they're going to – you know, you want to be able to finish the game strong. And so, you know, you look at some of the D-line last game, I think, you know, some of those guys probably played a full game or close to it, which would have been a full game five years ago, plays-wise. Is it ever, I mean, certainly you've had some great defensive linemen here. You see those guys trotting off the field and you're like, wait a second, yeah. well, why, why are those guys coming yeah. off the field? Well, and that, that happened way back when, you know, before we kind of started doing those things, and you see some of those guys off, and it's like, am I missing something here? <laughs> uh, but it's great for them because it, you develop the young guys. Not only do you develop them, but, um, you know, I think it, it keeps them more excited to practice, and you got to have them, right. let alone the bottom line is you have to have them playing. But, you know, like I said, I mean, we've done that forever at the wide receiver position, some running back things. Um, you know, probably like to do it more at the old line. Uh, I think it's good for everybody just to play more guys. What about the wholesale change? I mean, you, sometimes you go all four, all four instead of like two and two or whatever. Yeah, and so there's some, you know, there's a little bit of strategy in that. It changes from game to game just in terms of what gives us the best combinations out there. Have you noticed in your time here the quality of backup or second or third stringers that, that the the number of players that you can plug in has gone up as the program has has kind of grown and developed. Um, yes and no. I mean, at certain positions, um, yes, and in certain positions, you still feel like you're probably not where you want to be. Um, you know, some of that has to do with just experience, and so you know you got to have some talent, and then you got to have that experience to go to go with it, and then you got to have some depth. You know, these are all kind of the equation for successful teams. Um, and so that experience factor really, you know, really can jump out at you. I mean, you know, this guy's going to be a good player, but, you know, there's a lot more to it than just physical talent. And so when you get that guy that's got some good physical talent, now can you pick it up fast enough and does he have instincts? And that, you know, certain kids that jump in as true freshmen and play at a high level still amaze me. You see out of Wyoming, it looks like the last couple of games they started fast and had finished. Well, um, I know this. Um, I've been saying this for a while. I mean, the teams that we play and who we are, I think any, anybody can beat anybody, and I know that from watching those guys. They're extremely explosive um, on offense, do some very good things. And on defense, you know, they play hard. And, you know, they made the change with their coordinator. They started out, you know, the season pretty pretty fast, and then started giving up more points than they'd like to, and so they made a change. But, you know, they got guys that play hard, and hey, we've we've done the same thing on defense as, as well. We've been in, in, in spurts and in flashes, and so you know how it goes. But, um, you know, we got three three games remaining, and hopefully more. And, um, you know, we're just trying to play our best ball 
for the season at this time. Is there anything about Wyoming that jumps out that maybe they do better than the average team in the league? Well, I think that their offense, you know, and the quarterbacks is is uh, as troublesome as anybody that's out there. I mean, he he is really, you know, he's that dual threat guy, and he's one of those guys that sometimes when it's not all just right is at his best. And those guys are extremely scary for coaches. And so he's, he's played a lot, and we've seen him, you know, on tape and played against him, and we know what he can do. And so he's a hard guy to contain, and they spread you out and run a lot of plays and all these things we're talking about. So, you know, that's that's hard. And, um, you know, I thought their defense played played well. I think Fresno's, as we know, a really good offense. And, uh, you know, they might have worn them down a little bit, but they were playing inspired football and giving those guys all they wanted, certainly early on. And, you know, the good teams, I mean, Fresno did that to, you know, to us too. They wore us down after a while. We had to make a run, but that's a good team they played. You look at their offense, and, you know, not only Brett, but the, the running backs averaging six and a half yards a carry, the receivers are averaging 12, 13. Just a lot of big play threats out there. Absolutely. I mean, you look at the, you know, you look at the stats, and you know this is probably the time of year where you can look at the stats, and they can tell you tell you a story a little bit. And there's, you know, they're one of the top offenses in the country in terms of what they do. I mean, and, you know, it kind of starts with the run game, and they can run. They're fairly balanced in, in the run yardage and passing yardage, and then you throw the quarterback in there that when it's not just right can make make some things happen. And so, you know, this will this will be a good challenge for us without question. Did you notice a lot of changes defensively? Obviously, they switch coordinators, or is is it too late to kind of make wholesale changes? Like that? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you didn't see a bunch of a bunch of dramatic changes. No, um, you didn't. But I do think they're they're playing. I think they play hard, anyways. You know, and uh, that defensive football can be so tricky sometimes. I mean, again, I've said it a, a lot of times. I mean, you put on. Uh, you know, all the snaps that we played against Colorado State, and there was some really good defense played out there. And at times, then there was, you know, it's like this one guy let down, and it's just like, oh, it looks, doesn't look good. And so, you know, you, you, you play 100 <coughs> plus snaps, and, you know, okay, five, six, seven snaps are not good. That's a, that can be a lot of points. So those defenses are in, they're in a hard position these days. It's been a really tough year for, for Kirby Moore. But he got a, an academic honor, made the all district team as a chance for an academic honor. Yeah. That. yeah, that goes without saying with Kirby. I mean, he's like clockwork in terms of the type of person and student he is. I mean, you don't you don't bat an eye. Uh, I mean, that guy's rock solid in terms of all those things. I mean, he hadn't been playing, and he knows every bit of our game plan and helping the young guys, and he's signaling and all those type of things and trying to play during the week. I mean, he's not. You know, he's not a guy last week or two probably. He, you know, he's been trying to, he's been practicing and we're trying to get him there and it's just a, one of those strange things. And each week we are hopeful. It's like, okay, it's just a week. And then we get close to game time and make a decision. So it just hasn't happened. But he's a great student, better person. And, uh, you know, with not a whole lot of season left, you hope he can get in there soon. Is it, is it valuable to have him travel? It just seems like, you know, he almost looks like a coach. The yeah. On yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple times I'm just ready to give him my <laughs> and say, let him go. Well, I think probably one of the biggest compliments is, you know, Coach Prince is always the one lobbying for him. And usually we don't travel our injured guys. We just don't. It's just, you know, if they're not going to help us, we need to get the next man up. And, you know, you're so thin numbers wise that you, we, get, we got some room. And, and Coach Prince is always lobbying for him to go because he truly helps him during the game. We thought just Ryan Finley able to do this. Is he able to practice? No, he hasn't. No, he's, he's making good progress and stuff, but he's not practicing. We asked you at the Southern Miss game about this, but eight fifteen start for, for you as a coach. How, what do you do all day? Do you like painful? You, you like getting up and playing right away? Painful. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, usually on home games you'll have some recruits in, so you do some recruiting things, and you know the rest is is trying to buy time to to get to the game. So yeah, I, I don't think anyone likes these. Late, late games, and I think everybody likes kind of the afternoon. Have we even played an afternoon game this year? Yeah, yeah. One so Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. God, those are the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it, is it is it worth it to play on national television? I mean, how, how does it differ? You know, from well, the yes, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people get to see you, and the university gets money for it too. So, 
you know, that's that's what we're all about. You know, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. How do you balance the, the players? You want to have meetings and being with them and stuff, but but also knowing that it is a long day and you want to give them time. Yeah, we just we don't we don't really change our routine. You know, we have our our walkthrough and you know bring them in a certain amount of hours for a pregame meal and the way it goes, they'll just have a little more time in in between. But it is what it is. Is eight fifteen worse if you're the road team? Uh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. I haven't seen the game times, but the length of game seems longer. Oh. But but because of the number of plays, it seems like there's more momentum swings. I'm not saying number of plays. Number of commercials seems <laughs> way more. I mean, it's it's just, I don't know. It's just, it just seems ridiculous. I mean, they stop the game every, you know, every change of possession and in between it and all those things. And, I mean, I guess you got to do it, but it's just painful. And I don't think it's good for the fans either. You know, they sit there. That's why I think more people are staying home and watching on TV. It's like, why, why would I do that? They just, you know, you have a commercial, I'll go do something around the house and then and then come back. And so I just wish they had less less stoppages of the game. Did you watch the Wyoming game live? I watched a lot of it live, yes. So you really noticed that. <laughs> not, not like, you know, your coaching tapes where there are no commercials. Yeah, and so I, I, I noticed it more – when you're coaching because you just get into a rhythm on either side and it just stops every single time and you know you get it you got to have commercials but they're you know certain ones are long and certain quarters they have more and it's just i don't know that's the more than the start time that's what i wish could be shortened up they almost went nfl style during the colorado state game where commercial after the touchdown then commercial after the kickoff yeah which yeah. nothing even happened. It was a touchback. I yeah. Think. And then, so you played one play and maybe 15, 16 minutes of yeah. time. Yeah, I, I hear you. So, <laughs> I mean, that's where you guys should be spending your time when your editorials on getting on. <laughs> I don't think it's going to have any bit of difference. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? To, I mean, there's a lot of downtime when the players are kind of huddled up yeah. down there, you know, the, the red hat guys standing out there on yeah. the field. <laughs> yeah, they stand there and kind of bounce on their toes and, you know. Sprint up and down the sidelines a little bit, but it's, uh, yeah, part of the game right now. You mentioned the the eight fifteen later start times are tough for the fans. How much of a push pull is there? You know, on the positive side, you get money and exposure. On the the negative side, maybe it's tougher for the fans coming to the stadium. Right, and so everything's a balance, yeah. and uh, you just kind of go that direction. And um, you know, hey, we're we're all about getting paid and. Playing on national TV, can we not just do it at one o'clock? I mean, why does it always have to be so late? <laughs> so. The, those media timeouts, is that something that you uh, that can be a strategy, you know, like in basketball where you know exactly where the timeouts are? Well, we don't know. You don't know? Okay. No. I mean, they might know, and sometimes they'll come and say, hey, we're going to have a timeout right after this kickoff again. But that, that happens rarely. And then, you know, you have an injury, so they're going to sneak another one in, and you think, okay, that's going to replace the next one, but it seems to not. <laughs> I don't know. Matt talked about, uh, you know, uh, and he said Stra Strauss pointed out they only have nine practices left during the regular season. What, what's kind of your message to these guys here? All of a sudden, we got, you know, two and a half, three weeks left, and, and a lot on the line. And well, that I think that's just it. I mean, you worked a, you know, an entire year, uh, really, to be for these last three weeks. I mean, there's still a lot to, you know, a lot to play for, and these old games are all big for everybody at the end of the season, and. And so that's where we got to keep our focus and stay excited about those things because it's very easy to be worn down by long season, a lot of injuries, a lot of all these type of things. But really, I mean, that's how football goes. And those that can really stay focused and be excited about this time of year are the teams that are going to come out and play well. Do you think the seniors in particular, maybe you had the bye weeks, you couldn't tell, but there's all of a sudden some urgency to them knowing that? Yeah, and, and they, and they kind of, I think those guys get it as much as anybody. You know, I think it kind of filters up where the young guys have no clue. I mean, they're just trying to survive and get from day to day where the seniors, I do think, appreciate, you know, their days uh, here and have for a while. Nice to have a home team. Absolutely. Challenger mode. Challenger mode. Yeah, absolutely. It's really nice to be home. And, um, you know, I was thinking about that the other day, and we actually practiced in, in the evening time yesterday. And, you know, at night, there is something great about night games and the fans and the energy that they, they bring. I just, you know, hope it's not too late where they're tired. You know, we, we need to have that, that great Bronco energy and that loudness of the stadium when they have the ball. 
that does make it fun. I mean, there there is something about those night games that has always been good around here. Getting back uh, back to Brett Smith too. Um, it seems like you, you know the mobile quarterback used to kind of be a rarity or a different challenge. Now that I mean, has that become the norm? I mean, you look at your schedule. You probably played more guys like this than you have that are traditional dropbacks. Yeah, and so you you probably goes with more of that spread type offense. Um, what you're seeing more and more of, and the, the kind of ideal quarterback that goes with it is a mobile guy. Um, and so you are seeing more of those guys, and it's, it makes it harder on defenses without question. Okay. Thanks. Okay.